So guys, welcome back everyone. A new week, a new video. So this time I want to show you how to use the blocks from last week and turn them into a sweatshirt-like t-shirt with long sleeves. And most importantly with ripped cuffs, a collar and also a waistband hem piece. So we can draft new pattern pieces to finish these areas. And a very special bit, uh, thing about it, since it's a jersey knit pattern, um, we're going to make them a little bit smaller, actually by 5%, but you will see that in the video. So once we have um, created the pieces here and here and also for the hem, we can then finally cut it in the fabric and then I would show you how to assemble everything with an overlock machine but at the same time if you're at home and you don't have access to an overlock you can always use your home machine with um, one of the stretch stitches and if you don't have any of these either a zigzag will do for sure for a quick prototype just to check the fit well I don't want to talk too much this is already a very long video so enjoy and leave your comments um, down below at the same time, you can text me online, um, leave me messages. Thank you very much and well, enjoy the video. Bye guys. So we will need our front, back and sleeve pattern. But before we can start to stitch it, we have to make a piece for the collar, for the cuffs and for the hem as well. So let's get to it. Click check on the diagram and let's start measuring. Of course we measure without the seam allowance, we measure just the pure measurement. So let's start. Start with the cuffs and we have 28.5. Now I'm measuring the hemline. Front and back are pretty much the same. They should be because we drafted them the same. They are 46 each, so that makes 92 in total. 92 all the way around. So a little bit more tricky because we have to measure the curve is now our collar so I'm matching them on the shoulder seam no seam allowance don't forget so I'm bending my ruler a little bit and the front part is 12 centimeters I'm gonna note that right down on the pattern it's easier for future reference and then on the back part 8.5 so in total that makes 20.5 but don't forget that is still just half of the body so times 2 the full collar will be 41 centimeters I'm going to note everything down real quick so if I lose my paper it's still on my pattern pieces so now in the next step, I have to draft these pieces and let's do that now. Clean paper. So let's start with the collar. Actually, we're just going to draft rectangles. So 41 centimeters long and Actually, we want to make it a little bit smaller. It's for Jersey and for better fit in this case, I'm going to um, Take 5% of the length so that is around 39 and then I want to have my collar 2.5 centimeters wide mm, I will make it double and I want to add seam allowance 0 0.6 centimeters so the total now is 6.2 times 39 
And then for the cuffs, I'm going to do it in a very similar way. Um, we have 28.5 centimeters. I'm going to this also by 5%, which gives us 27. And then this, I want to have it 4 centimeters wide. So that means um, 4 centimeters times 2 front and back of this cuff. And then another 0 0.6 centimeters times 2 for seam allowance. So in total, that's 9.2 and 27 centimeters long. I'm always marking the middle with a dotted line. So this is where I want to fold it. Now, the hem is the biggest piece. I measured 92 centimeters. I subtracted 5%, which makes it around 87.4. But now, in retrospect, I think I should have made it even a bit smaller. So for a tighter fit around the hip or the waist, make your hem band tighter. Anyway, anyhow, this is the original calculation now. And minus 5%. It's quite a long piece. I'm drafting basically the full piece here. And there we go, note real quick, cut it once, cut the, for the collar, twice for the cuffs, and one piece for the hem. So I'm going to quickly write onto the pieces before I cut them out, so I know what I have. Of course, note how many times this needs to be cut. And now we can cut it. I've sped that up for you guys because it takes forever. It's trying with the scissors first. That wasn't a success. <laughs> then I had to switch to a knife. You will see. So a bit of a struggle here. Old blunt scissors, not ideal. Thank God I bought this Stanley knife, so yep, that's much quicker. A little bit bad for the parquet flooring, I suppose, but then I was planning on sending it anyway. So now it's time to put it on the fabric, and I've done that real quick. It's all pinned on important corners and bits. Thank God I have a second pair of my amazing scissors at home since my first pair is now gone. If anybody took it, I don't mind if it just reappears at some point. I love these scissors. So cut, 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 and very importantly, a little snip at all of the notches. See? Notch, notch. And then very important also the center of the head of the sleeve. Chop, chop, chop. I had to cut out lots of pattern pieces when I was doing my first internship at Veronique Leroy and she was always very peculiar about how to cut. If you're right-handed, cut right way around oops that was the wrong side and she got very upset if you like slightly cut into her pattern and she would like freak out like if you cut one millimeter every time next week we have a different size she's right so everything's been cut out so it's time for the assemble you might notice my hair is a bit of a mess now because this is day number two I've been filming this over like three days and I've been editing now for two, so it takes a while, peeps. So we're matching the shoulder seams because this is the first thing we always want to do. Stitch the shoulders. And once the shoulder seam is done, we can stitch the head of the sleeve to the arm sky. Just 
double checking the notch there because this one aligns with the shoulder seam so it's very important we need all these notches because then stitching is so much easier now I've moved over to my overlock machine just had it um, serviced a bit it's doing quite okay this is like an old industrial one and it does have a differential feed so we want to put a differential feed so it pushes the fabric together doesn't stretch it out and keeps our seams kind of straight because jersey tends to stretch out and this isn't even jersey that I'm using it's a very light and thin knit and it's very difficult it always rolls away so actually I have to overlook it very very slowly you guys with um, domestic machines with your Berninas at home you can um, use a triple stretch stitch you can try to zigzag it you can use one of the like kind of overlock stitches that they have there's many options my favorite is like the triple stretch stitch on these home machines and we can just leave the edges raw because jersey doesn't do much it doesn't unravel it doesn't really kind of fall apart it's just how it is so snip snip shoulder seams have been done quick check there's a lot of lint that needs to be taken care of but I've adjusted the, the tension before so the seams don't really open up that can sometimes happen with the overlock now we're giving it a bit of a quick pressing using lots of steam to relax and kind of like set our seam there both sides it's always good to iron every time we finished a seam the more the merrier <laughs> and now let's fit the sleeve I like to put it all kind of like the way it is so the right sides are facing up also the sleeve I'm looking for the notches just making sure they're all there and then I flip it over right side on right side and then I will choose now kind of one side to start from it doesn't matter if it's the front or the back but I try to do both sleeves kind of in the same direction So the nice thing is we don't really have to kind of gather or anything. We just work them on top of each other. And um, a good idea is always to put the longer piece downwards because that's where the differential feed is and that's how it's getting transported. Mm. And then we just stitch it together, being very careful, edges on edges. Better safe than sorry in this case, actually. It takes a while, and patience is very important. If we start to rush, we might make mistakes. I'm almost back to the other side. Make sure it's all aligned and snip snip. One down, one more to go. Same idea again. Match it on one side. And then we have to match the notches while we're stitching. I try to pin as little as possible because if we accidentally forget a pin, the overlock machine doesn't really take it well. And the knife will get dull because it will try to cut the pin and then the needle breaks probably too. You will see later for like the cuffs and stuff, I have to use a pin every now and then. But if I can avoid it, I try to avoid it. It's just very dangerous. 
I already sped the video up a little bit. It's, it takes a while. And almost at the other side. Yes, snip, snip. And we have to iron it now. Steam it. A little bit from the other side as well. And then I want to try it on. The side seams are still open, but there's already like the main structure now, so we can see. For me, it was important to see the length and the position of the shoulder seam, which is a little bit dropped. It's super nice. I like it. It's very floaty. The material is very beautiful too, it's just very hard to work with. This like very transparent, thin knitwear. So I flipped it inside out because now it's time to do the side seams and we're doing them in one go. The sleeve and the side seam of the bodies. If you remember back um, when we were drafting, I used the waistline as a little notch on the sleeve. I didn't have any kind of like helpful line. I could have added a notch, but I didn't. So I'm just taking it from kind of the cuff to the um, underarm area. And yes, I have like a big scratch on my hand that's slowly healing. It just really looks much worse than it is. Bit of a sanding situation. And now we're reaching like the underarm area. Um, I actually try to not have the seams perfectly on top of each other because that might make them a bit like bulky. It's better to have them next to each other. Otherwise we create like a bubble under, under our arm. And all the way down, snip, snip, and then the next side. You might have noticed we can't really like um, do a backstitch with the, the overlock, so we're just trying always to, to catch like the raw edge of one seam with kind of like the next seam so it's finished. And that one's pretty easy. It's just two layers of the material. The cuffs and all of this stuff is much harder because it's three layers, so one is always kind of trying to get away from you. And the last little bit. And snap. So, our main shape is pretty much there now. It just, it just doesn't have any finishing. So there's no cuffs, there's no collar, no hem. But it's basically already like wearable, actually. And a pretty nice, kind of like easy fit. So now I've left some original sound for the nice paper. And I want to match the little um, collar now. Also just to see what happens. And it's very pretty. Nice size. So these are our cuffs. Have same thing. Let's unpack them a bit. Quick look. go there. I have two of them and one for the collar. So let's take it all and attach it. So the first thing I want to do is I actually want to turn them into um, kind of tubes. So I'm stitching the sides together because I have to stitch them together and then I have to fold them on um, this dotted line. So I'm going to do that like in bulk, so to say. Some of you might wonder why don't we just stitch them directly to the sleeve and then stitch them with the side seam. 
it is a possibility, but then we always have the kind of overlock end point and it's a bit ugly and it's a bit kind of like cheap finish. So we have this loop now and I gotta fold it. And I fold it so the seam allowance, like the ugly stuff is on the inside. And I have this clean, beautiful collar. It's a bit tricky. Now you can see how it rolls away. If you pull it a bit, the edge rolls. So I need to um, iron that and kind of shape it. I'm going to do the cuffs as well real quick while I'm at it. Quick check on my hand. Does it fit? And then stitch it. So the first cuff in the making and now the second one. So we put them kind of like right side on right side, open edge on open edge. And I've sped that up really fast because it just takes a while. So now we have collar and two cuffs and I need to iron them into shape. Don't forget we kind of drafted them front and back so now we have to fold them like this. It's very tricky so I've sped that up like big time. <laughs> Take your time to do it. Actually by the last cuff I kind of figured it out. With this material it's the easiest to sort of iron them over first and then kind of work it in a round. You just want to be really neat and clean about it to get something like this. Back to the collar, second try. Sometimes it's really better just to put something that doesn't work immediately to the side, take care of something that is kind of easier to achieve and then back to the difficult one. So now I'm just folding this over, letting it cool down, and then actually cut the part out where I wiggled it into shape. So two cuffs and a collar, and now it's time to attach them. And now it's getting a little bit trickier. So we also want to make sure that they're nicely aligned. So I'm notching um, exactly opposite the little seam that we have, so I know kind of like this is halfway through. And then I want to align the seam somewhere um, next to kind of the shoulder seam to the back. So it's in a very like unprominent position. And once I have this, I want to just evenly distribute the length of the collar into the neckline so it's all nice and even and there is not some spots with like weird gathering or anything. I mentioned earlier that I really try to avoid pinning when using the overlock machine but these cuffs, collar and hem pieces do need pins because they are smaller than the original um, body or sleeve pattern now, minus 5%. So it's important to distribute them well. So quick cut now and I am ready to stitch it all. Spread it up a little bit. You can see the tripod is touching the table, so it's all vibrating when I stitch. Well, it's a learning curve, guys, seriously. Also, the camera resolution is, is now very well, very nice, but in some clips it's very blurry, even though I'm shooting it all in the same 
mode it really depends on the daylight as well and i've been filming over many days so sometimes it's in the morning sometimes it's in the afternoon i'm sorry about that anyway taking our time slow but steady a nice clean finish is more important than a quick finish I would say we should always keep that in mind it just takes that little extra step most of the time just to get the finish well sometimes a few steps and we're done now time to iron it a little bit relaxing the seam relaxing the yarn in the inside of the back neck it's a little bit messy you can't see that right now you might see on the ironing board normally we would want to kind of stitch a little yeah ribbon in there or some kind of band for a nicer finish it's quite common for for these jersey things so turn it inside out and I actually want to stitch the seam allowance down now, if I had a twin needle, for example, and the home machine, I would definitely want to do like a kind of twin needle finish. Or at school, we could use the flat lock, the big one that hasn't really been set up yet because it's very complicated. And that one can also do this like twin um, needle finish where you have like two parallel lines. And then on the back side of the fabric, you have a kind of little, little zigzag mesh. So now I'm ready for the cuffs. Quick check there. And now I'm placing the cuff around like this. Optionally, I can also put the sweater inside out and then put the cuff in between. The sleeve is actually a bit better to have the longer side on the outside, but now have it on the inside. But it's a short distance, so it's much easier to match this and I'm matching the side seam of the sleeve to the side seam of the cuff not directly like a millimeter next to each other so it's not too bulky I'm just making sure that all three layers are neat and on top of each other it takes a bit of fiddling but we can do it voila number one and number I'm notching the opposite side also real quick, placing them on top of each other, making sure everything is nice and neat. And then let's stitch it too. Aligning them again, it moves every time I pick them up, so. And the last little bit. Voila, and we can snip it. There are a few options for like the hanging thread. We can pull them into the overlock with a crochet needle or we can also use a little bit of heat to melt it. So now I'll put the sweater back on my mannequin and last thing to finish it all is the hem. So I'm taking it back and now time for the hem bit of a close up here so same same I'm turning that long piece into a loop you can see my little notch there that marks the middle because this is where I have to fold and 
iron. I'm using the little blade here, but it's a bit tricky. Snip, snip. And I've ironed it. <clears throat> and now you can see very clearly now in this super zoom that I have those three layers and they're also rolling in all kinds of directions. So I've literally cut out the pieces where I'm like hustling the fabric. <laughs> you can see this is how it goes. But now you can also see in like the super close up that it's not like a t-shirt, it's really like a very thin knit, like knitted. I don't want to say t-shirts are not knitted because they're also knitted, but it's also a jersey knit, so they're on different machines. And especially with the hem, I was very slow. It's, it's a very long kind of seam. Like, you remember, it's like almost a meter, like 92 centimeters. And then the waistband is quite a bit shorter. So it takes a while because you always have to as, as well match. So this is also pinned. You know, then you see me like releasing the pins and I've sped it up a lot because now I'm already done. I was secretly ironing. And there we go. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I do. And I'm going to try this on now. If you guys have questions, whatever, ask me, text me, leave me a comment. And bye-bye, everybody. Bye. This time, there's a lot more um, of, of kind of cutting and me speeding parts up. It takes a lot longer to actually make the t-shirt than drafting the pattern. So. Um, I hope you can follow. If you can follow, just press pause sometimes or like go back a few seconds and just try to manage. If you don't have jersey fabric at hand or the kind of fine knit that I was using, there's always the possibility that you might have some jersey bed sheets at home or uh, something else that is kind of big and made from jersey. Otherwise, um, old t-shirts, the bigger the better. We can stitch them together into like kind of a big patchwork and use that as uh, our, our material. If you have a, an old bag of, of clothes somewhere in your storage or something, um, that could be an idea. Otherwise, four-way stretch might be an option, but it's not very ideal, let's say that. It doesn't have the drapiness, it doesn't have the softness and kind of lightness that knitted and um, also jersey fabrics have.